Hi. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event or a webinar, a webcast, um, I don't know what else do you want to show it, but we're call us. Uh, but we're online and we're live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, the show is free and open to anyone to watch. You can join us on Wednesday mornings. Or if you can't join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. All of our recordings are posted to our website, so you can watch our recordings afterwards. Um, we do a mixture of things here, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, um, basically anything that's related to libraries, we will have it on the show. And we do bring in guest speakers sometimes, and uh, sometimes we have our own Nebraska Library Commission staff doing um, on with us, and that's what we have today. Um, we have Deborah Dracos and Alana Novotny and Beth Goble all here today, all from the Nebraska Library Commission. And um, they're going to talk about Nebraska Memories, our um, digitization project here for historical um, items <laughs> that we have. So I'll just hand it over to you guys to take over and um, explain what um, it's all about. Oops, there we go. <laughs> okay, and what we're going to cover today is the new interface that um, has been loaded for Nebraska Memories, the software um, that we use, ContentDM has gone through um, several iterations and updates and we finally have our updated look <laughs> <laughs> that we put quite, quite a bit of work into. So Alana is going to talk about the interface first and then I, Deborah, will talk a bit about some new policies we have on donating materials and then Beth and I will talk about some of the newer collections that have been added since we last did an Encompass Live on Nebraska Memories. So, Alana. Hello, everybody. Um, as Deborah said, I'll just kind of briefly talk about the new interface. Um, you can see it, uh, hopefully, up on your screen here. Mm -hmm. Coming through fine. Good. Uh, first thing you'll see in the center is a image of the, the state of Nebraska that has a number of other smaller images on it. Um, this is just what we are calling our map exhibit. Uh, it's just another way for us to highlight some of the great items that are included in the database. Uh, this is something that will rotate every so often. Um, I'm actually working on our new one, so it'll be changing soon. Uh, if you're curious about whatever images are on this, all you need to do is click on it. And then you can see here, um, I have listed out in every Im uh, image individually, and you can click on any one of those to learn more about them. Uh, the next thing you'll see um, prominently displayed here is the browse, the view, and the search. Uh, I'll come back to those in just a moment. I just want to scroll down and show the bottom half of the screen. Under Exploring Nebraska Memories, this is where you'll find our blog posts related to Nebraska Memories. Uh, we try to do a post every two weeks uh, highlighting different items in Nebraska Memories. And if you want to know more about Memories, we do have some information with an additional link over here on the right. But let's go ahead and jump into actually looking at the items in Nebraska Memories. So I'm going to go ahead and do Browse Items. Uh, one of the things I always have a problem about when I visit other sites from other states is I never know what to search for. So I like an option to be able to browse and just see what's in there. And we offer a few different ways to do that. First of all, if you feel brave, you can do All Items. And this will bring up All Items uh, arranged alphabetically uh, in our site. And you can see over here, uh, we have uh, 5,601 items currently in the complete Nebraska Memories. So that's just all items. I'm going to go ahead and jump back to Browse. And the next area you can see here is the Browse by Topic. Um, what we have done as a staff, we've just gone through and found some topics that have um, a number of different items that we think are would be important or useful to display. Um, you can see here there's about we currently have 27 topics. We have added some more when we did we did the interface. So if you're interested in seeing safe, um, let's look at farming. Here are the items related to farming. And they cross all the collections that are in Nebraska yes. Memories. Yes. 
and just working my way down the page here, we also have a browse by location. Um, you can see here the state is uh, divvied up into six different locations. And so w these different locations show the items that are in Nebraska Memories that were mostly where photos were taken in these particular parts of the state. This is not where the participants are from. These are actually where the items are from. So I clicked on the Panhandle area. You can see to start off with we have some photos from Sydney and Crawford. Uh, one of the things you noticed as I moused over, this is a new feature with the latest version of Content Dam we install, installed. When you hover your mouse over a photo, this additional little box pops up here that gives you a description, date, and the subjects of that particular photo or item. And the last on, item on the browse page here is we do have listed out each individual collection. And we are currently working, we have 36 different collections in Nebraska Memories. Another way you can see these individual participants is if you go up to the top of the screen and go to All Collections. Um, this too is a new page uh, that we created after we updated the software. And what I like about it is you'll see all the collections are all listed here in this kind of left-hand box. You will see a brief description of each collection. And then you'll also see this carousel that randomly displays some of the items in each collection. So it's a great way to kind of get a highlight of what is in each collection. Clicking on any one of these items will take you to the exact um, image or photo or a musical score, whatever it may be. Or if you'd like, you can just click on the particular uh, title of a collection. Uh, here now we are looking at the Fairmont Public Library slash Fillmore County Historical Society's collection. You can see that's clearly labeled here. Um, at this, on top of the screen and then up by the actual in the right hand corner you see again we list who owns these particular items. Um, that is one thing we didn't talk about is all the items in the collection with the exception of the donated materials which Deborah will speak about later are still owned by the institution um, that we worked with. Um, again there's another carousel here again these are just random images it's just a great way to give an idea of what's in the particular collection. Um, you also will define, yeah, well, excuse me, will find a description of the collection um, followed by their rights statements. And this just tells um, what the copyright or the restrictions are for each of these items in the collection. And then finally we have um, browse these suggested topics. Uh, these are just themes that we have found in each individual collection. So it appears there's a lot of um, interior shots and street scenes in this collection from uh, Fairmount Public Library. So clicking on any of those two would bring up those 11 items or 13 items in case of the street scenes. If you want to just jump in and browse everything in this collection, you have a couple options. There's a button here that says browse this collection or another one up on this top bar. So you can see now I got all, I think that, got kind of a glare on there, I think that's 50 results. Um, so I can click on any one of these items to see more. Oh, that helps. <laughs> Krista turned off one of the light sets in here so the glare isn't quite so bad. Um, so here's the photo of the inside of the cafe. Uh, again, this box here that you're seeing is new. We now have the option to zoom in and out on the photo. Not quite sure you, why you need to zoom out, but it is an option. But the other one, of course, I like to do is to zoom in.
And then she's, you're clicking and dragging. Yes, I am clicking with my left mouse button and dragging the image around the screen. Um, you can also click on this next little dark gray box here, which is full browser. And that just makes it a little larger um, area on the screen to see the image. So I'm going to go ahead and close that by clicking on the close option. Uh, the next two items will make it fit to window uh, or fit to width. And then the last two are rotate. Uh, you may wonder why you need to rotate an item. Uh, some of the postcards that we have in the collection, especially on the back when the writing's included, um, you'll have text going multiple directions, so it'll be helpful to rotate it so you can actually put the text um, in a more readable way. Below each uh, item in the, in the Nebraska Memories, you will find its record. It will consist of a title, a description, the publisher, um, some type of date range. You'll see the subjects here. Uh, each of these are hyperlinks, so if you want to find more cafes or more pictures about Fairmont or photographic prints, you can click on any one of those. Um, and there's the additional information in the notes. And then, of course, ordering and use, we do link back to the right statements that I pointed out earlier. Um, if you have not worked on a digital project like this, uh, one of the hardest things is you may think it is scanning the photos. That's not true. I think the hardest part is actually doing these records below because everybody's like, well, tell me more about the photo. You know, tell me more about the photo. Uh, think about that shoebox of photos you may have at your house hidden away somewhere, and if some stranger came across that shoebox to have you put any information in it so you know the people in the future would know what those photos are, uh, that's the same problem that we run into these. Unless someone has a memory of these photos or have written stuff down, it takes a bit of work to try to figure out what each photo is, what the description should be. So um, the who, what, where, and when is very important. And I, too, want more all of those W's in there. Um, but like I said, that is the hard part. Uh, last thing I just want to point out, we do have a search screen on, or search box on every screen. I'm going to go ahead and search for postcards. And you can see I only got three. The one thing um, it is important to remember when you're doing a search up here when I'm already in a specific collection, um, if you open the advanced search, you'll see down here I'm searching only the Fairmont collection. So if you do want to go out and search all the different collections in Nebraska Memories, you do need to click on Add or Remove and just select all of them. The last new feature I do want to oops, do want to highlight here is on my search results page, you will see this left-hand column. Um, it, this is does contain a list of all the collections we are searching. Um, so for some reason, if I want to ex exclude, say, um, Antelope County, I can just click on that and it would remove those result, any results from Antelope County from my search results. Um, I also then have the option here to narrow my search by type or subject, creator, and date. Um, these limiters may vary a little bit, but again, this is a nice way maybe if I'm really interested instead of um, I want to see parks in Nebraska, I could click on that and it will do a search. And so now you can see up here I have a search for postcards and that are just the parks in Nebraska and Omaha. So a great way to help refine your search results. I think those were the highlights of, did I, I'm looking at Beth and Deborah here, did I forget anything in the new features that I should be I think those are the showing ones. off? And then we'll talk about some of the others in the donate yeah, as I do the donate. Yeah. If we have time, I... I did use some of the features. All right. It was actually new to me. I, I hadn't been in for a while, and it was the, the ability to rotate and to um, 
enlarge a photo mm -hmm. to see some writing on it. We do have a question that came in that sure. I'll just ask now because I'm not sure when it would fall into the um, what you're doing anyways. Someone wants to know, is there a limit to the number of pictures you can add to a collection? No. It's whatever yes. they send you, we'll, put we'll, in. Yes. <laughs> um, our largest collection right now is the Butler County um, collection, mm -hmm. and that has 1,001 items. Oh, okay. And they have many, many, many more wonderful images that we would love to take, <laughs> but they were a totally volunteer group mm -hmm. project, and um, they just didn't have the manpower mm -hmm. to do more. And we were very thankful to get the thousand items. But that leads into the fact that um, in the past we have worked with um, institutions because we do want to make sure that any of the images that we put on Nebraska Memories um, can, can the original items for those images can still be accessed by the public. So we have tried to limit it um, basically to historical societies, museums, um, the state universities and colleges, um, plus some other colleges. So mainly institutions in, in Nebraska. The materials do have to be Nebraska related in some way, um, but we have had numerous inquiries over the years about private materials things that people wanted to contribute. So we have come up with a new policy, and if you go to our Nebraska Memories main website, you'll see that there is a link now to donating private materials to Nebraska Memories. Okay? Because and Deborah, you changed to the Nebraska Library Commission's oh, website. Yes. We're on the Nebraska Library Commission's website. And this is where you find the information, information about participants. Memories. Yes. And actually from Nebraska Memories, you can get there by going to the home page and, and the learn more and I'll, where do you, I'm sorry. Yep, there's right there. There's a couple different ways to get there, but if you click on any one of the participate, it takes you into the introduction to participating which actually is a sub-page of the Nebraska Memories page, which is where it started out. So, okay, so I'm going back to this page where um, we talk about donating private materials to Nebraska Memories. Um, we cannot just take digitized images. We still want to stick to our, um, our position on having access to the original item, so that if a re researcher ever wanted to see the original item, they would have access to it through some institution. So what we decided on is if a private person wishes to donate the actual original items to us here at the Library Commission, or to they can do it to an individual library or institution also, but if they donate it to us, want to donate it to us, we ask that they um, look at this page first. Look at the criteria, because we are looking for materials from um, a certain uh, time frame. Uh, number one, we do need things that, um, that are clear for copyright. Either they fall in the public domain, which means an easy cutoff is just it's pre-1923. There are some other exceptions, but we it's easiest just to say pre-1923, unless the, pers the photograph that's being donated was taken by the person who's donating it. Okay, so they have the copyright themselves. We ask that the materials themselves be pre-1972. We do limit things to um, photographs, postcards, manuscripts, diaries. We can't do newspapers. We don't do high school or college yearbooks. Okay, So there are some restrictions on the types of materials we can accept. And then we do ask that the, um, 
donor be able to give us information about each of those images so that we can complete that record and give some basic information on the who, what, when, where. If the items that they wish to donate meet those criteria, we do have them then sign a deed of gift which donates those items with the copyright to the Library Commission. We would then scan them, write the records, the descriptions, put them into Nebraska Memories. Depending on the material, type of material and the content of the material, we may keep the item in the Nebraska Library Commission collection or once they've been added to Nebraska Memories, we may find another home for them, uh, a museum or a library that has some connection with the content of that item and has a collection that they would add it to. So that's what um, our new policy is on the donation of new materials. Okay. And then I'm going to go back over here and go back to Nebraska okay. Memories. And I'll show you a couple things um, that have been donated to the Library Commission. And as Alana mentioned, there are several different ways to get into collections, but I'm just going to go through the browse and go directly to the donated materials. Okay. I'll click on Browse this collection, and you'll see that we do have some photographs and postcards in here. But what I'm going to show you today is one of the um, autograph albums that has been added. Okay. You'll notice this is what we call a basically a compound image. Um, you'll see there, are, or object. actually this one is an object. Um, there, are, each page can um, is listed in the right hand navigation, so you can jump to any page directly. You don't have to go through them one at a time. Okay, but you'll notice um, at the top of these particular images, we have actually added um, a transcription of the text. Sometimes handwriting is hard to read, <laughs> um, and sometimes people want to search you know, for specific words, especially if it's a longer document. So in this case, we actually did a little um, trial project of crowdsourcing and we have no idea who helped us um, on doing this, but within a week, we had two, uh, or week or two weeks, we had two autograph albums totally transcribed. Thank you for all those yes. of you who helped. Yes, thank you very much. Did they translate awesome. the French as well? Um, actually, there's... I didn't think about you being able to read French. It means I can't forget. Oh, okay. okay. Is to forget, and je ne puis means I cannot. Well, I think they were transcribed as is, except for the Swedish, which Michael yeah. did find somebody to <laughs> translate yeah, the Swedish yeah. for us. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. um, so, <clears throat> you'll see this is one way to look at the text. So you have the image, or you have the text, or there's also a button that says View Image and Text, which opens up a viewer where you can see both the transcription and the image next to each other. Okay, and in this case, you have to scroll back and forth. Well, if you click bit. on those little double arrows, the little double arrows down, right in the middle. Oh, gotcha. And drag it to the left. Oh, okay. Our text and, box and, was and just a little bit large. Then I noticed if you click on one of the two, the center options up there, it will recenter the image. There we go. And it depends on your computer, because on my computer this morning when I double-checked it, it showed up perfect. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you can always zoom in. <laughs> yeah, that too. Okay, so, yeah, we could zoom in to make it a little bit larger, a little bit smaller here, too. Um, so, that's one another way to view uh, the text and the, tra uh, the transcription and the actual image. So, I'm going to close that and show you one more thing that's new here as far as those items that have a transcription with them. You can also do a search. So I'm going to just type in a word. I'm going to type in mother and say go. Oh, shoot. I must have opened the, I opened the other <laughs> autograph album because when I typed in mother, I got eight results in the other one. 
So let me type in another word. I'll go for John. Aha, uh -huh. okay. This time we found 23. So now you have the option Okay. Hang on just one second. It will highlight the words in the text. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm going back to the text. There we go. Now I've got my arrows. <laughs> okay, when you're on the text and you do the search, then beside the, um, the statement as far as how many were found in the document, you get up and down arrows, so you can actually jump to the page where that word is found. So we have one uh, John on page 9, the next one's page 10, 13, page 13, page 16. So that's how you can search through um, the document. Okay. Um, that will, those were the main things that I was going to highlight as far as the autograph album. So is there anything else that you Thought, can think of a land on? Okay. So, are there any oh. questions? Oh, go ahead, Alana. I, yeah, could you point out the reference URLs? I didn't talk about those oh, earlier. Sure. If you want to put a link, oops, and I, <laughs> okay. And I'm, we have equipment in the way. Um, so, it, just, I can't see where it says reference URL, oh. but if you click the link for reference URL, you get a shortcut URL that you can then use to um, point directly to this particular item within Nebraska Memories. Okay. Is it, and I wanted to highlight uh -huh. specifically on this one, you'll see there's actually four URLs listed there, right. but if you read the top one, it is to link to the entire object, so that would be the actual full autograph album, mm -hmm. but then the third link there is to link to this page. Well, so, this one says page six also. Oh, you're talking about this one. Yeah, I'm talking about the third one there. Okay. So this, that one there will actually actually take you to that specific page. So if you wanted to, you know, share that page for some reason with someone, you can do the specific page. And it's shorter than this one, which is also a page. This is for um. That that's to embed the to entire embed object yeah. again. Oh, page six. Oh, weird. Page 6, page 16. Uh, we won't go there. <laughs> I normally use that top link, and it does well enough. And I, I, use, a sec <laughs> I use the third one a lot when I'm in. in con I, I was sending pages to Emily here at the commission going, I can't read this word. Can you read this word as I was trying to clean up some of the transcriptions? So. Got it. Okay. And I don't know why. I clicked something here, too. So we'll just ignore that for the moment. I think you just add that add that page to your favorites. Oh, and the okay. important thing to note about favorites, they only actually uh, stay on the computer you are currently using. Um, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, let me think here a minute. Um, so, were there any questions on the policies or, or any other questions about adding items to Nebraska Memories mm, at the moment? Yet. No. If you have any questions, go ahead and type them into your GoToWebinar interface in the questions section there, and we can answer them for you. But nothing came in yet. No. Okay. Okay. Beth, did you want to do your two new collections next, oh, then? Okay. And then I'll do the other two collections. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I am not as good with a mouse as, as either Alana or Deborah, so um, I am going to need to get back up. Go to all collections, and Alana has already shown you this. And I'm going to use the scroll bar that she showed you. And I'm going to talk about two collections. One is Omaha Public Schools, and one is Rising City Public Library. And I think I'll start with Omaha Public Schools. And just as Deborah did, or was it Alana? Either one. <laughs> Whichever. It was you, Alana. Yeah. Um, 
this is a great way to get in if you already know where you want to, to go. And what I'm going to do is uh, tell you first a little bit about how we came to, to be working with them. The Omaha Public Schools has a great research library. And we've been in conversation with um, the director of the research library for a while. And um, she had, uh, they have, just as Lincoln Public Schools does, they have files with photographs of schools going back into the 1800s. And she was interested, uh, the, the director at the time was interested in getting some of those into Nebraska memories. So this was an example of our come and scan for you uh, offer where we will come to an institution um, and Lori Sailors comes out with a portable scanner and she can scan up to 50 items. So in this case, she did go to Omaha Public Schools and scanned 42 from their collection. So now we're going to go take a look. I like that. I love that Browse This Collection feature, and I love the hover. That So bear with me here. Here's where I know there's 42. And I have a few that I'm just going to show you. And I think the... Uh, and again, it doesn't look... This one is one that I just piqued my interest. Um, Omaha Central was one of the first high schools uh, there. And what intrigued me about this one, I had looked at it earlier this year, is all these cadets. And it, it just gets you to wondering, because look at the year here, 1912 is when this picture was taken. And, and I'm not sure why, but many of the photographs that, that Omaha Public Schools contributed were taken in 1912. But all these cadets. and um, so they could have been about age 16 and just do the math and get to 1914 and where, where one has started. I just wonder how many of these young boys ended up as soldiers in the war in 1917 when the United States joined the war effort. So it just made me a little sad because this year we're celebrating the 100th anniversary of the start of World War I. But anyway, this is, this is typical of many of the photos where they're um, there was, I would say there was probably a professional photographer involved here. So that's that one. And I'm going to, I'm just going to use my back arrow, I think. And I wanted to show you also, um, this one has a fun story behind it. And I, I don't want to spend too much time, but these children standing in this stairway here, this is the Brown um, Park School. And the story, uh, and I just point out that, again, because they're a research library, look at that extensive historical note. And there's a story in there about five boys in 1909. There had been a train robbery, and they were out in behind the school, I think, and they actually found materials from the robbery, a gun, ammunition, whatnot. They did what they should have done, is they <laughs> went back and told the principal, and she got the janitors out there, and they found bags from the train robbery and they actually found something hidden in the attic of the, of the school. The, the culprits were caught and eventually these boys, can you imagine, they, each of those five boys received a $2,000 reward. The railroad in Pinkertons, it says here, was offering a reward and in those days that would have set those young fellows up for life. Mm -hmm. So um, I just, it's just nice to see, to see the story. So this picture is much more recent than that, 1945, but um, I chose that one because it had the story in it. So, And I think I'll just show you two more. I could go on forever about this. But <laughs> this one intrigued me also, and it is, I have to get down and find Omaha High School here. And have I lost my... These are alphabetical. I don't know. There, now I can grab it. That's the original Omaha High School. And uh, I was talking to Alan about this the other day too. Is it, It's quite imposing and it actually was built on the site of the territorial capital. Again, we have some great historical notes, so we know that. And lovely turret. And there's even a note that um, the person writing the description thinks that flag was added that it wasn't in the original uh, photograph. In the original photo? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Photoshop. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> or, or whatever the version of Photoshop was Whatever. Before. Yeah. Drawn on the negative. Yeah. 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 It was glass plate negative. 
Yeah. yeah, so this was the old school built in 1872. This photo was taken in 1899. And then, I'm, I guess I could go back to here. This is something else that the other two ladies were showing off. I just keep losing that scroll bar. But there's another picture of the school that I wanted to show you um, for a couple of reasons. This one. This is a postcard, as you can see. And the interesting thing about this is it is it's not complete, but what they did with, with this the old Omaha High School is they started building wings around the original building. So there's the original building is still there, and I believe it's the east wing has been constructed here. And over a period of years, they just kept building wings all the way around. And then they tore down the building that was in the middle and made it into a courtyard. And it looks, it's that way today. Alana showed me a picture from, what, MapQuest or Google Maps or something yeah. um, the other day. And it's not a, there's, there's a, something covering the courtyard now. But the, the school is still in use today. But... Uh, okay, and this is where my incompetence with the mouse goes, is do you see faintly there's some writing? This was a postcard. Mm -hmm. And I thought, darn it. That's excellent as they are at descriptions. They didn't put what it said on the postcard mm -hmm. in anywhere in the description of the historical notes. So I thought, okay, I'm going to try this out. So um, I could enlarge it. So I tried zooming in. I thought, okay, I can, I can make it out sort of now. But it, it, it actually wraps around. So I'm going to go back a little bit. But that writing actually, the person writing it was writing here, and then they finished their sentence up there. It's upside down at the top. So that's yeah. where you go. Eventually, if you just keep moving around, you'll get to, so that's in the end what I did, is I, I used that feature of being able to rotate the image. And just so you know, it says, Dear Barb, we are now at depot, waiting for train to pull out. Don't forget the good advice I gave you. <laughs> but what was the advice? Right. Right. No, no. <laughs> like, what was it? <laughs> Still something. And happened. okay, this. Correct. Uh, aren't there two images here? No. Front and back. No. no okay. So. Some of our, many of our postcards have writing on the back, and then the back is uh, scanned as well, but not this one. So. Anyway, do you want to switch over to one of your? libraries now or do you want me to continue on? You can just continue on. That's okay. Fine. Then I need to navigate back. I'm going to go back to all collections. And this is another uh, more recent but fairly small collection. And that's Rising City Community Library. Now, this was uh, something that doesn't often happen for us, but in this case, the librarian contacted us. She had been visited by the Northeast Library System uh, director who had told her all about Nebraska Memories, and she uh, was interested in, ha in uh, knowing how she could participate. So uh, Deborah and I went to visit, and what we found was uh, we met with the library board, and they had uh, you know, not a large collection. Uh, we have about 30-some images here. But framed photographs that they had on display in the library and also some other materials. Uh, and they were um, photos that were in the right time period and so on for us to use. And they actually allowed uh, Deborah and I to bring those, those pictures still in their frames and the other things that weren't framed back to the library commission so that we could scan them on our, our bigger scanner. Uh, so that, in that way, that meant that our, our person from the commission uh, didn't have to go up to them. So that was very generous of them to do that. So now I'm going to browse. And, and something else that um, I think it was Alana mentioned, when, or perhaps Deborah, when you're searching a collection, if I had just searched on Rising City, I would have gotten a lot more than just these ones contributed by Rising City Library because this is in Butler County. And there are quite a few photographs uh, related to Rising City uh, in the Butler, the gallery, the Butler Gallery. Um, but today I just wanted to zero in on this particular one. 
So, there it is. Okay. I wanted you to see, um, I'm a sucker for bars. So here's <laughs> Clyde Jones's Tavern. And this is actually, I think, from the 50s. Let me check. 1945. Sometime between, you know, a lot of, of our participants, they don't have an exact date, so they give us a range of dates. And I did, this one just really caught my eye. I'm, the, the old table there, and uh, this is just marvelous. It's actually an at, this structure here that she is standing behind. This is Clyde, and this is his sister. Is it, it's for ice cream. It's for the seal test ice cream. So I just thought it was kind of neat. And it's dark. Typically, it's sort of dark inside. And the people, uh, I think the board members helped identify what was in the pictures. And they so they knew they had Clyde's name, his sister's name, and the name of this customer, too, which I thought was pretty good uh, legwork on their part um, to find it. So anyway. And in some cases, some of our volunteers have, um, for example, Valley actually had a, uh, a coffee morning and they brought in a number of the older residents in town to the local cafe, served them coffee and treats, passed around enlargements of the pictures with magnifying glasses <laughs> um, and had people tell stories and then they had volunteers taking down those stories to help identify people and places in the pictures. So that's another way to get some of those, mm -hmm. some of that information. Mm -hmm. And there's that wonderful pop-up. I, I just love that feature too, where you can just hover over a picture and see it. And this one, I think we all kind of had fun with this one when, when we were looking at it, is this is a picture, a, a photograph, probably taken by a professional photographer of a professional photographer <laughs> taking a picture of the people at the Arlington Hotel. I mean, it's just, I don't know, it's just quirky and fun. So again, uh, they didn't have a lot of information, but they, uh, historical information, I mean, you have a good description of what's happening in the picture and a short description. Um, and then the hotel is no, was taken down in 1918, and again, the range of dates. And um, so that's an acceptable thing to do if you don't have an exact date of something that you'd like to contribute. Okay, um, do you want to move on, Deborah? I can show them more stuff. Sure. I I could show them the opera block before and after it got burned to the ground. As, okay. Yeah, sadly, uh, fires were pretty commonplace in those days. And in small towns, there probably wasn't a lot of equipment to, um, to deal with them. So uh, there was a, a nice uh, little shopping area, Main Street there. And uh, the opera block is what they called it, was uh, the building you can barely see it there at the end. There's a barber shop here where um, the barber actually got into the uh, book of records for having shaved a particular gentleman's face every day for 45 years. And I think I calculated <laughs> that would have been over 16,000 shaves. Yeah. Yeah. But at the very end of the block, you can just barely see it there, is what they call the opera block. So I, we have other pictures of the uh, opera block here. And it was a, it was a little business building. So there were several different things in here. There was a general store and several other things. And I did not ever figure out what the leader means on the building. Could have been the name of the newspaper, maybe? I wondered. Cause, but it doesn't say anywhere in the description that the newspaper office was in there, I don't think. But the upstairs, yeah, that's, that's why it's called the opera block, is because there were meeting rooms up there and there was an, a place where they could have concerts. Up there, so it was probably the main building in town um, at that time period. Again, the range of dates, but then I think we get to the 1920s, and sadly there was a fire. I keep losing that thing at the end, and um, ruins of the opera block. Yep. And I, I'm not sure if the whole, that whole bunch of buildings along the whole street burned down or what, but they did lose several buildings. And that's all there was left of it. And that other picture, I didn't stay on it long, but there was a, a pole, a 
a telegram, oh. telephone pole right in front of it, and that's what's left standing. So I think this is a great example of a fairly small collection that um, people just banded together and, and provided good descriptions. And, mm -hmm. and I think Lori was able, I think she was able to scan some of these right through the glass without having to actually take the photos out of the frame. So we can work with you on in many ways. We just have one comment in the film stories. I believe it was when the... Um, what about the boy, the children finding the robbery? Oh, yeah. Items? An awesome story. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing it, yeah. Okay, I'm going to highlight two other um, collections that we've added recently. And I can't see. So, Alana and I are going to switch places here so I can... Oops. Okay, try that again. I'm going to go to browse. <laughs> That's just easier for me. Okay, and I'm going to actually start with the Rock County Public Library. And in this particular case, um, we were contacted by the librarian who was retiring last year, and she wanted something done with ten cassette or five cassette tapes, ten sides, um, of oral history interviews that had been done back in 1982. And she was worried that they would disappear. So she contacted us and asked us if this is something that could be added to the Nebraska Memories Collection. And we said, sure, we'll see what we can do. So we actually brought the cassette tapes back here to the commission and our talking book and braille service converted the um, sound from the cassette tapes to a digital file. And then um, I listened <laughs> to um, all of the all ten sides and um, basically tracked the topics that were talked about and who was talking on each of the sides because he, Dwayne Hutchinson, um, who is the interviewer, did talk with a number of different people um, over several hours. So we broke it up to make it a little bit easier um, to access the information, the sound recordings, and you'll see that there is a player right here built into Nebraska Memories. The file is an MP3, um, it is in an MP3 format, so it can be listened to on almost any device. You'll notice that you can jump to any of the sides. They're listed again, just like the pages were listed from the autograph album. And in the description, it does specify for each side what who's talking and what the topics are. So. If you just hit play, it just starts playing, I, talking. Is, uh... So, really easy to get to. Um, it's interesting what he, the, he actually did was um, talk to these people specifically about the time period of the late 1800s through the 1940s just their memories and family stories and things that were going on. So they talked about, of course, the Depression and World War II, what they were doing, you know, when they heard about um, Pearl Harbor and the boys that went off to war from uh, the Bassett area in Rock County and just daily life, you know, living out on a ranch that was miles from town, running, having run-ins with bandits. <laughs> there were there were some up in in that area of the state um, that had their hideouts, you know, running from the law. So it's an interesting collection, and it's a little bit different because it is a sound recording. And this was we've had some musical pieces added to the Nebraska Memories. Um, right at the beginning, but this was just a different take on uh, a collection. And we thought it was really interesting. Did you have any information about why this was done back in, was it um, Dwayne Hutchinson? Dwayne Hutchin who did it? Yeah, and Dwayne Hutchinson, he's at, he was actually from Lincoln and he wrote, uh, he's writ, had written 
several books, you know, ghost stories that have been collected from people oh, in Lincoln. You might have heard I've of those. Read mm -hmm. some of those, yeah. Well, he was doing a workshop up in Bassett at that time on, you know, collecting family stories, writing your family histories and things like that. Mm -hmm. And they asked him to come to the library and, you know, just do some oral uh, mm -hmm. histories. And so he, they invited, you know, people in and he talked to them. I can't remember the exact number, but it was like a, a dozen different residents up in that area. So that was an interesting project. Okay, the other collection, new collection that I was going to highlight today is from the Garden County Historical Society. And again, this was just a slightly different um, project for us. It's actually just one item. Um, it's a book that is a collection of newspaper articles that were written in the 1980s, okay? But it's a collection of articles that talk about the history of Oshkosh and the Garden County area. Um, it was a self-published book. Um, by the, the woman who wrote the articles, Helen Robinson. Okay, let me try this again. Okay. Um, but we had, we did get permission, or the, actually the Garden County Historical Society had permission from the family who donated the book and from the local newspaper uh, to actually put the, digitize. digitize the item and put it into Nebraska Memories. Um, because it was typed text, we did go through the process of OCRing it, which is optical character recognition, to get the text version that is searchable. Okay, um, So you can do a search on uh, people's names or, or whatever you want to put in here. Um, but Alana and I did spend a bit of time going through and cleaning up the OCR <laughs> because um, it's never perfect. And we wanted to make sure that the family names especially and the business names were searchable. So we did go through and um, uh, correct a number of things in the OCRing text. Um, but in this case, it's in it's really neat because in each article she has a um, a theme um, whether it's uh, businesses or recreation you know particular kinds of of businesses let me find the beginning of a an article here a chapter okay so chapter four she's talking about yeah perhaps <laughs> so she ha and so she has information about the opera house, things that she remembers. Plus, she would ask people in the community to contribute their recollections, and so she would sometimes include those in the chapter in the article um, for that week for whatever she was talking about, and sometimes. A week or two later, she would add in the information that people had sent to her about an article that she had written previously. So um, it, it's some, it, sometimes it's sort of like a little hodgepodge, <laughs> but it has wonderful stories about the history, the town of Oshkosh from the late 1800s um, through, uh, through mostly the 1960s, 70s. So, um, again, it's a slightly different project, but wonderful information for that particular town. So, question. Yeah, interesting read. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Alana, actually, Alana started from the beginning, and I started from the end, cleaning up the OCRing. So she read the first, first half of the book, <laughs> and I read the second half of the book. <laughs> and what we each read, we, we thoroughly enjoyed. So. I went back and scanned other parts, because like I said, it oh, was... Okay. I had to get the rest of the story. Right, right, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And actually, there is an index page, the table contents page, I should say, which pr 
provides um, a listing of the topics for each of the chapters. Okay. So, Deborah, can I just point out, sure. again, at the bottom of this little, of the little window, you'll see those double arrows. You can pull this down larger and make it, make the viewing area, area larger. Yep. So, whoops. So then you can scroll instead of having to drag the item the image or yeah kind of depends on your monitor it depends on your monitor again. this, this monitor yeah. is kind of small here but yeah yeah so if you want to know about you know doctors or nurses in the hospital or farm machinery or rooming houses hotels and motels <laughs> it's just all different kinds of topics and you know I learn things just everyday things that things that they did at those times that I had no idea of. So, mm -hmm. so any other comments or nothing has come in. Uh, anybody have any questions or comments? Go ahead and type them into your questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Now, if someone has a collection they want to do, have us do, what should they? They should, they, con something. <laughs> uh, they should contact either Beth or me. Um, and actually, if they go to Nebraska Memories, to um, again, to the Learn More under About, um, it talks about uh, things that you need to know. And if you scroll down to the bottom, we, well, we've got Frequently Asked Questions. Um, which talks a little bit about donating materials. And then also, mm -hmm. if you click again on the participate, it takes you to the Library Commission page where we have uh, all the information on what's required for um, uh, adding a collection. And at the bottom of this page, it says you can contact either me or mm -hmm. Beth Goble. Cool. Right. Anybody have any questions, comments, thoughts? We just hit 11 o'clock, which is officially so perfect timing. Okay. Unless you guys, anything else? Oh, we really would that. like more collections. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yes. We need more. And we, ha we do have people, um, as we talk about this, out at uh, different conferences and things saying, oh, my you know, local historical society has a wonderful collection. You should talk to them. Well, yes, they might have a wonderful collection, but so very often, the historical societies are run by volunteers, mm -hmm. and they don't necessarily mm -hmm. have the time or the manpower to get us the information that we need about some of these, some of those images. So, mm -hmm. if you think they have a wonderful collection and you'd like to volunteer to work on that project, mm -hmm. please let us know. Mm -hmm. We do have some comments. Um, I, thank you for a wonderful session. Which says, but also uh, very informative. Um, Susie Dunn says, I like the new look and the new features very much. Are there er areas of the state underrepresented here that you wish you could get materials for? Is there oh, certain areas we, that we're really We get for? people who um, say that, to, who say, why don't you have more pictures of, of out west? Well, we have tried mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, several different places, like in Scotts Bluff and... Um, Actually, I think more in the Sand Hills. Yeah, region and in the Sand Hills. Hills. Yeah, there's less places, yeah. obviously. But we've we've made we've tried. We've contacted people um, up in Chadron too, and mm -hmm. and it's it's hard because of of the the time requirement, you know, to to like you said, work a lot on of the items. historical stuff and genealogical stuff is run by volunteers. Right, right. they're just keeping up with their place itself. Right, and this is a whole other. Right. Thing they'd have to do. Yeah. Yeah. And actually for the collection in Sydney, the Cheyenne County uh, Historical Society, Lori Sailors, who, who um, also works with us on Nebraska Memories, actually went out to Sydney to scan the items. Mm -hmm. And while she was there, she basically interviewed <laughs> two of the older people from the community mm -hmm. to get the information about each of the images mm -hmm. as she scanned them. Well, that's convenient. <laughs> yeah. I should mention one of the benefits when we do go out and work with libraries to do the scanning, we do give the libraries a digital archive 
version of the image. So that is sort of a motivation. They do get something in return, too. Yes, yes. they do. Yes. And so then, yeah. of course, it is something they could store off-site somewhere else in mm -hmm. case the yeah. unspeakable happens <laughs> to the actual physical items. Mm -hmm. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. So, all right. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you very much. I'll just take this over here and mouse. I don't need the keyboard. All right. Well, thank you very much, um, Ms. Moot, Alana, Deborah, and Beth, um, for being here and talking about Nebraska Memories. Um, it's a very cool project that we do, definitely, and like you said, always looking for new things. So um, get in touch and, and share some of your things with us and see. And it's great, too, that you put so many different new formats in there. I know when we first started, it was mainly just physical pictures and things, but um, I think it's cool that we can expand to anything that we can possibly get creative and think about. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Um, the show is being recorded, as usual, and will be available later um, uh, to watch and to share with your colleagues. Um, there we go. So that will wrap it up for this week's Encompass Live. Um, I hope you join us next week when we will be here. We will have someone here the day before Christmas. <laughs> um, we're, we're open the day before Christmas. Uh, as Susan Nisley, who's here at the Library Commission, is going to talk about Overdrive. Uh, there is... Um, it's new, the new... Um, Fairly new app. app. Yeah, mm -hmm. Overdrive app for um, that you can use. Um, and we actually have two new devices that some of your patrons might be bringing in. Oh, that we have copies and of ask examples of? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Yes. Okay. yes, we got a paper white and a, what was the other one? I can't think at the moment what the other device was. Windows 8 tablet? Yes, a Windows yeah. 8 tablet. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's I'm a whole other issue about Windows 8. Yes, that's a whole other show we could do. But anyway, <laughs> um, as you can see here, Guild Creative with our Day Before Christmas. Tis the day before Christmas and all through the land, librarians brace for the upcoming influx of patrons with new tablets wanting to know how to access OverDrive. So you may recognize that. It's happened before <laughs> previous years. So Susan decided this would be a good time to do a little refresher on this and to show um, how to get the app onto a tablet and um, so that people can, when they come in after Christmas, you're going to want to know how to do this for them. So uh, sign up for that next week and any of our future shows. Uh, we are also, if you are a big Facebook user, Encompass Live is on Facebook, so go ahead and like our page over there. We post when new shows are starting. There's my login reminder for this morning. Um, when the recordings are available, we let, people, we let you know on here as well so that you'll uh, know that it's um, ready for you to watch. So if you are big on Facebook, go ahead and like us there to keep up with what we're doing. Over there. And let me just double check if any last minute, no last minute questions or urgent issues. So that will wrap it up for this morning. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.